Dear Diary, I thought moving to an island was gonna be fun. Boy, was I wrong. We've been living here for two months now. I still haven't made any friends on Cedar Island. My journal entries have been as predictable as the ceramic lawn ornaments rolling off the assembly line at the Bumstock factory, where my dad works now as a designer. One after another, the same ducks, elves, and bunnies that people have been sticking out on their lawns forever. playing on our school's basketball team would help me fit in, but it didn't. I still didn't make any friends, not like I had back in Chicago. But now, finally, I have something different to write about, because tonight, my life on the island changed. It got worse. It happened just tonight at the brand new Bumstock Sportsplex, named after Ludlow Bumstock, the lawn ornament tycoon. He built the place because he's nutty about our middle school basketball team. And since most of the islanders work for him, I guess they want to keep the boss happy. Basketball is serious business on Cedar Island. Oh, come on, Rav, help me out a little bit. Which puts a lot of pressure on our new coach, Mr. Donovan. Oh, you saw that foul? I was hoping I could stay on the bench when the game was on the line because I didn't want to lose it for us. I'd rather be ignored than despised. <laughs> O'Malley shoots at the wrong basket. Uh, let's call it a pass. Madison bringing the ball up court with time running out. All right, guys, come on, Dexter, makes the pass. What, Roland, what are you doing? Out. Come on, oh, Roland, on the bench. Oh boy, now that's five on LeMay. Could have scored. Picasso, get in there. Don't do anything stupid, Dulap. Dulap now in for LeMay. It's a good thing my parents love me no matter what. Oh. It's a steal oh, for oh, Madison. Come on. come on, guys, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, come on. Oh. <laughs> Oh, wow, Dulap is trapped! Shoot! 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 Come on, Picasso, you can do it. And it's Dulap on the line for two at the end of regulation. Right here, sir. Two shots, both dead. Down by one point. No time left. Make both shots, and I'd be a popular guy. <laughs> OK, just relax, Picasso. Take your time. OK. One more chance. Stay calm. Make this one, and we go into overtime. Just don't blow it. Go in. And the final score is Baxter Bay 31, Lawn Ornaments 30. It's okay, Picasso. Good, good try. Oh, you choked! You're a choker! An island boy wouldn't have choked!
Gather around. I want to talk a little bit about tonight's game. We had an opportunity to pull this one out. You know, we we could have could have won, but we came up a little bit short. That happens sometimes. Don't worry about it. We'll, we'll get them next time. Okay? Yeah. If we get rid of Picasso. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Aha! There he is, Cedar Island's answer to Willie Mays. Willie Mays is a baseball player, Dad. And I bet he couldn't play basketball as well as you. <laughs> you were wonderful. And you looked quite dashing in your basketball costume, didn't he, Victor? Oh, very handsome. I think we should go to Rodney's and celebrate your first ever basketball game. First game, first loss. And the blame for that rests squarely on the shoulders of the other team. They simply scored too many points. <laughs> no, Dad. Come on. <laughs> oh, yes! The ice! Yes, the moonlight and the briny smell of the sea. It's marvelous. Come on. Here you go, Bob. Every lawn ornament gets a free hamburger after every game. When we lose? Especially when you lose. Thank you. Hey, B-57. Let me tell you people something. Cedar Island is famous for two things. Lawn ornaments and basketball. Bumstock lawn ornaments is still the world's finest. Our glorious tradition of basketball excellence is on the way out. And who do we have to thank for that? Donovan, that's who. That big, overgrown goon of a coach comes in here from away and thinks he can run things his way. He thinks he can let every boy on the team play in every game and still have a winning season. Well, let me tell you, it can't be done. Do you realize this could be the first season Cedar Island fails to make the Tidewater League Tournament? No. Now, you think about that. You gotta do something. I saw a bear roaring a dinghy. <laughs> yeah, I saw a bear roaring a dinghy right out in the cold. Maybe it was a man rowing a dinghy. Sometimes our eyes can play tricks on us, dear, and at night, well... No, there was no man. I saw a bear. But how could a bear row? I don't know. He was in a boat. He was hunched over the oars just like, like a dog poop in a peach pit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. That's a nice quiet. What are we doing here? Wish we could move back to Chicago, back where my friends are. This is where your father's work is, honey. He was lucky to get this job, you know? There aren't that many opportunities for ceramic lawn ornament designers, even brilliant ones like my Victor. No, it's just I like to make some friends and have some fun. You will. And you're going to make a lot of friends. 
I mean, after all, who wouldn't want to be your friend? <laughs> Better not choke tonight, Dulap. Back off, moron. What? game for us tonight, this is your head. play it as a team, right? Right. right? right. We're gonna run a play for O. Okay, beautiful. Okay, when I get in the O zone, I'm unstoppable. No, 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 no. None of this O zone business. You cannot be afraid to get under the basket. You are gonna go back door for a layup, all right? Oh, I've got physical contact issues. Okay, uh, just do your best. And team! Hey, I hear Dexter's gonna learn how to water ski next summer. If he can get his bear to roll fast enough. <laughs> So, check in, get in. Don't forget what I said. Oh, I'm not feeling so good. What's the matter? I think I have the flu, the, the Canadian flu. I, I think I better stay on the bench. No. Pull you back in. Just sit down. Greg, get in there. score is the mighty, mighty Fighting Clams 44, Cedar Island 35. How do they expect to win with me sitting on the bench? Where's Donovan? What can I do for you? Oh, you can learn how to coach. What do you mean by letting every man on the team in the game? That's no way to win. What? Oh, wait a minute. Don't tell me how to coach. You pay for the fancy gym and the fancy locker room. You buy the kids' uniforms every year. But you know, this is my team still. Well, then, you better start winning. Because the lawn ornaments won under old Doc Thompson. And now, under you, we're losing. Isn't that grand? OK, well, thanks for dropping by. I'll take everything you said into consideration. Let me tell you something, Mr. Man. If the lawn ornaments don't get into the tournament, you are through, Donovan. You hear me? You are through. <laughs> Christmas.
get dressed. Everybody up! Merry Christmas! It's Christmas! <laughs> For the most beautiful woman. Why, you're the most beautiful woman. But have you been good? I hope you've been good because this is for you. And it's the best present ever made. And you Picasso! may have. Picasso! Picasso! Can't have Christmas without the boy. There he is. There he is. There he is. Merry Christmas. Now, me first. Okay, okay, okay. Here, I got this for you. Just open it. Come on. Just, just... It's not shaking. Art supplies. Oh, spoons. These are oh. going to sound so beautiful on the porch. And now for the Hi. Christmas boy. Ah! Whoa. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. I painted it to look like one of your eyeballs for identification <laughs> purposes. And that way, anyone who sees it, they'll know immediately that it's your football. Basketball. Basketball. Yeah. Your basketball. And now oh. for this year's Christmas creation. Yeah! <laughs> I don't know where I'm going, so you better, you better leave me there. All right now, no picking. <laughs> Keep your blindfold on. <laughs> Okay, get ready for this year's Christmas creation. Okay! Coconut, pineapple, some kind of flower I can't identify. Malakaliki Mata! It's Christmas in Hawaii! The volcano is Santa Claus, spreading happiness everywhere! Oh, Merry Christmas! Oh. Merry Kalikimaka! Yeah. Aloha! Merry Christmas! Rahuna! Rahuna! Yeah. <laughs> and now, for the pièce de la résistance. It's a map of North America. Wow! Now you can study geography while you play. A sound mind in a sound body. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah! Ah, you've hit the Continental Divide. Five points. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Sandwich and a piece of pie. Apple pie. Sure. Merry Christmas, Picasso. Merry Christmas, Mrs. Donovan. <gasps> what was that? Santa's back. I think it's a burglar. <laughs> Stealing shingles? Yeah, maybe. Ah. <sighs> 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 
It's a Bigfoot! Ooh. Was it a bear? Ooh. It was a Sasquatch. A, a Bigfoot. Dexter saw a Bigfoot rowing a dinghy. I think he likes me. And I know why. No offense, Mr. Donovan. You two look like brothers. I bet you he's been hiding in the woods spying on you. Because he thinks you're a Bigfoot. Well, he is certainly big and hairy. <laughs> Don't move, honey. <laughs> Are you? Are you? I'm a deadly. I'm allergic to dog spray. We and um, Bigfoot. Hey, did anyone see that show about Bigfoots? The one with the hidden cameras way up in the mountains? Mm-hmm. I bet he's been on one of those walkabouts. You know, the, the Bigfoot kids have to do. You know, the, the think about life and grow up a little. So the further he got from the mountains, and then nearer he got to the coast, the warmer he got. So he just kept on wandering. So you're saying he got lost trying to find himself? It could happen. <laughs> I just want it out of here. Please. Jeez, he's shaking. some of their friends in Chicago. Uh, oh, this is Victor's studio. Oh, this is my parents' Christmas creation. Watch this. That documentary said they learned by imitation. Yeah, but a Bigfoot playing middle school basketball? From what I know about Bigfoots, I'd say he's about 12. That's the right age. Yeah, it was the right age, matey, but it's the wrong species, Picasso. He could be the greatest player in the history of Cedar Island Middle School. 
What am I talking about? He could be the greatest player in the history of the whole league. <laughs> yes, he could be. But, uh, mm -hmm. no, you know, no, it, it wouldn't be fair, Picasso. Please. Oh, Picasso, look, the, the, the league is for kids. It's, it's not, no, it's not for animals. But if I recruit a player this good, and we start winning games, maybe the other kids will... What? Like me. Yeah, right. Look, Picasso, we do not need a Bigfoot on this team to win games. And when the other kids get to know you, they're gonna like you for who you are. You choker from away. No, you're not. You're a great kid, Picasso. A really great kid from Cedar Island. I want these lawn ornaments loaded and shipped by lunchtime now. So let's go. Come on, let's move it. We haven't got all day here. Hey, be careful. Don't put, put that down. Careful. All right, that's it. Come on, let's go. Come on. Hurry up, fellas. Come on, come on. Donovan, look out. What are you doing here? Oh, happy holidays, Mr. Bumstock. That's quite the operation you have going here. Yes, it is. I built this with my bare hands. You should be very proud of yourself. And just don't forget what I said about the tournament. If we don't get in, you're fired. You'll get fired from your first coaching job. You won't get a chance anywhere else. <laughs> Happy New Year, Mr. Bumstock. Mrs. Dingley's gonna meet us at the office. How much does she know? So all she knows mm -hmm. is that she's gonna be enrolling a new basketball player and that she'll do anything to help the lawn ornaments make okay. the tournament, hey, even, if means, even if it means coming in two days after Christmas. Okay, okay. come on, buddy. Okay, let's go. Get down. Better okay. hurry if we gotta make this. Okay, sit down. Sit down, come on. Name Ed Tibbetts. Greg. A uh, sixth grade. Address four five two five Breakwater Road. Mr. Donovan, welcome to Cedar Island Middle School, home of the lawn ornament. All right. Ah! Let's go. Okay. Okay. Um, so we have a new player joining our team today. His name is Ed Tibbetts. He's, he's living with uh, the Dulap family, and I want you to make him feel at home, okay? Ed? It's fine. Just, he's, no, 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 guys. Guys, no, he, he's, he's not going to hurt you. Come on. That's it. Come on down. All right. Now, now Ed learns by imitating what he sees. It, it, it's sort of a uh, Sasquatch see, Sasquatch do, okay? So I want you to show him how to play basketball right, okay? 
fundamentals. Okay, everybody, let's start working on our passing drills. That was very good, Ed. Why don't you work on some dribbling? Hey, guys, passing drills. This is called passing the ball. Okay? Okay, passing the ball. Okay. Something you'll never see Roland doing. Hey, Picasso, come here. Yeah, coach? How's that doing? Ah, uh, he's calm down. Do you think he can handle sitting on the bench for a while? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Roland! When are you going to start being a part of this team? You need to work on your passing. Why don't you work with Ed for a while? Get out of here! Get out of here! What are you asking? The street shoes off the gym floor! Get, 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 get. Close. What? It's come, come to my attention. You have a Sasquatch playing on the team? So what? Well, we're going to introduce him to the public. Good man. <sighs> nice passing, Ed. Let's work on some layups for a while. Oh, how am I looking? Right? Is it good? Good. How's the hair? Hey, don't get between me and the camera, okay? Cream, Sherry, please. Just a little bit of cream. Come on, let's go. Come on, come on, come on. Excuse me, are you somebody? Go away. Yeah. Bigfoot! Relax. I'm the coach. Come on, let's go. Uh, do, where's Dulap? Dulap! Yeah, Dulap. Do Dulap, right? Yeah. This yeah. is Picasso Dulap who claims to be the first person on Cedar Island to actually have seen the Bigfoot of the Sasquatch. We're going to get to the bottom of this right now. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I never claimed I was the first to see him. Uh-huh. Uh, Dexter Madison was. Dexter, hi, how are you? Uh, this is Dexter Madison. Madison. Can I have your attention? Can I have your attention? Now! Right. It is time for the photo opportunity. The Bigfoot is waiting for you at the Bumstock Lawn Ornament Factory, makers of the world's finest ceramic goo since 1915. All right, follow me. Everybody keep together and follow me. Now, on your left, that magnificent structure is the world-famous Bumstock Lawn Ornament Factory, where everything is on sale this weekend only. That's right. Hey, Dulap, wait up. Thanks for telling him I was the first one to see Ed. I mean, it was really neat to see them write down everything I said. They were really listening. They didn't think I was stupid or crazy or anything. You know, I should have told you this a long time ago. I had a feeling you were right about seeing Ed row in the dinghy, because I, I found his footprints behind the ovens at the factory the next day. You did? Well, why didn't you tell me? Well, I guess I was afraid to. You seem kind of mad at everybody. Well, it wasn't mad at you. You never made fun of me. Yeah, I guess it was stupid not to tell you. Yeah, how wicked stupid. All right, ladies and gentlemen, come on, step right in. Don't be afraid. Get in here. Come on, come on. Here. Don't forget to get the famous bump stock sign in the picture. And uh, I may have misjudged you. You do know how to win. You know, using a Bigfoot really is... It's brilliant. It's brilliant. All right, ladies and gentlemen, now, come on, step right in. Don't be afraid. I'm going to bring him out now. A real Bigfoot, straight from the heart of the forest. Ed, give it! That's no Bigfoot. That's a fake. That little bum suck knows where off he speaks. Ed Timmons is a genuine Bigfoot. It's a hoax. You didn't even take the trouble to look, do some research. Why don't on this you thing. come up here and take a closer look? Oh, I will. This is a cheesy scam perpetrated on a gullible and unsuspecting. That's a Bigfoot. <laughs> <laughs> Cedar Island welcomes Big Harry Lawn Ornament. Yeah! No, I don't want to let him practice until he gets some sneakers. I don't want him to slip and fall in his... Oh, not again. You've got a Bigfoot on your team. Yeah, well, I think the whole world has heard about mm. it. You want to meet him? No, I, I don't want to meet him in a basketball game, either. It's not fair to put a seven-foot animal in against a bunch of kids, and you know it. 
I'm not gonna stand for it. Oh, you won't, huh? Well, you can't tell me what to do. Yeah, well, maybe I can't. But I filed a complaint today with the Tidewater League Athletic Directors Association, and they can tell you what to do. It's all spelled out right here. You show up at the hearing tomorrow and say goodbye to your big, hairy... Uh, Fred? Ed? Lawn ornament. Nice sport coat. I'm kicked off, and my fighting clams are kicked off too. Well, of course they are, with a name like the fighting clams. I think you'd see a change in outlook if you gave them a more peaceful, loving name. Something maybe like the nurturing clams. <laughs> or even better than nurturing clams. You could drop that final G to give it more sportiveness. I love it. <laughs> we are not here today to change the name of my team. We're here to make sure our kids don't get mauled to death by a wild animal while trying to play basketball. Uh, excuse me, excuse me. Ed, Ed really is very gentle. He, he wouldn't hurt anybody. I mean, even if he is strong enough to you know, rip the tailgate off a pickup truck. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, but the fact of the matter is... But the, uh, the Tidewater League rule book makes no provision for wild animals. I, I'd like to say something. What do you think? It's uh, I think he's right about going by the book. Huh? I've read the book, and as far as I can see, it refers to male and female athletes, period. It doesn't refer to species. And that is a male athlete. A male Sasquatch athlete. But a male athlete just the same. <laughs> He's right. He qualifies. I can't allow a Bigfoot to play in the Tidewater League against kids. It's just not fair. We don't have Bigfoot. We have to go by the book. Change the book. We will. <laughs> Next year, huh? for this season, the ruling stands. <laughs> You guys want to do something? This was the best day I've had on Cedar Island. Maybe my best day ever. When I asked Coach Donovan to put Ed on the team, I'd hoped I'd make some friends. But I never thought I'd be this lucky. Ed's turning me into the king of Cedar Island.
baby. Happy Harvey Hansen of the High okay, Hopper okay. Sneaker Company. The brand the pros get paid. <laughs> I mean, love to wear. Get my man. It's a pleasure to gift your sweet, sweet feet with a pair of size 38 six top elite basketball sneakers that'll make you turn it into a king of the court. Yes, I love it. I love it. That's it. Get out of the way. Get out of the way. Here we go. Come on. How's the light? Come on. Move it. Move it. Come on. This is taking forever. Come on. Come on. Got the shoe ready? And here we go. The shoe. A shoe. A shoe. I love it. You're great. You're great. Okay. Come on. Come on. Keep it going. Keep it going. Come on. Give me something. Smile. Swap. Beautiful. And Devonair. <laughs> Come on, let's go for it. That's it. That's it. Come on. That's it. I smell money. <laughs> <laughs> Control the tap. Oh, the ball goes out of bounds. We want air. We want air. We want air. We want air. Yeah. We want air. Madison up court. Over to LeMay. Turns and shoots. Yeah. We want air. 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 game. Go, Red, go! And entering the game for the lawn ornaments is Ed Tibbetts. Rebound, Madison. Ball goes up the court. All right, Ed, no showboat. Come on. Tibbets called for goaltending basket spots. <laughs> to uh, I'll say something and you say something and uh, just try to relax and, and don't get between me and the camera. Is, that right? is this okay. your wife? Yes. yes oh, you is. are beautiful. Would you join us for this interview? Oh. Thank you so much. You ready to go, Coach? All right, here we go. So this must be... A... So this must be a, a great time for you. Uh, uh, yes, it is. Yeah, yes, yes. It, uh, we're, we're very happy to have Ed on the team. Um, he has all the, the skills you like to see in a big man. He's, he's, he's big. <laughs> uh, he's a, a fine work ethic. And, you know, now it's just a matter of finding the, the, the right combination of players uh, to, to um, complement his skills in the, the different situations that we face as a team. But you can't tell me that uh, because of all of the publicity that Ed's getting that you don't have serious problems with some of your players, you know, being jealous of, of Ed. Uh, no, 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 we don't have any, any jealousy problems. Uh, Ed makes the other 12 players uh, better. Hold on! Excuse me, we're doing an interview here. I have something to say and you're not going to like it. Uh, in all the excitement of having a Sasquatch play basketball in the Tidewater League, I overlooked an infraction of the rules. Coach Donovan, you have 13 players on your team, and the rule book clearly states you can have no more than 12. I'm sorry to say the Spuds win by forfeit. That's, that's not fair. I'm afraid you can't use Ed Tibbetts. We're doomed! Unless you get rid of one of the other players. Turn in your uniform, do less. 
I joined the team so I could make friends. But now if I stay on the team and keep Ed off, everyone will hate me. If Ed's not on the team, then the lawn ornaments won't make the tournament, and Mr. Donovan will get fired. Why shouldn't I quit? I'm the one from away. Who needs a choker? Time for school, Ed. Uh, there's the boy. Do you think these pants are a good color for him? Well, of course. They bring out the color of his eyes. What about me? There he is. Who needs him anyway? OK, everybody, let's start studying chapters five through seven, because there's going to be a test on Friday. Mr. Donovan, can I talk to you? Yeah. What's up, Picasso? I've decided to quit the team. Yes. You can let Ed play in my place. Picasso, you don't have to do this. You, you have as much right to be on this team as Ed does. Even more. Because you've been on the team longer than he has. I want to do it. Picasso. Can't even make a basket. It says a motorist spotted two adult Bigfoot up the coast yesterday. Masters of camouflage? Spotted by a pair of motorists? Highly unlikely. Probably a couple of kids playing around in Bigfoot costumes. Or maybe conceptual artists. Do they like Ed? Who'd want a geek like me for a friend? to make friends. Mm. It's too stupid to understand that you're my friend. Mm. I'm sorry, Ed. Mm. Look at the expression in the eyes! Circumspect! That is a circumspect expression! Bumstock ducklings are supposed to be... Insouciant! Insouciant? Every season we have new models of ducklings, and every season their expressions are insouciant? Right. The squirrels are wistful. The gnomes are puckish. And the ducklings are insouciant. Right. Now when I see shoddy work like this, I'm not surprised that Christmas sales were down this season. And I'm warning all of you right now. If the spring line doesn't make back the money we lost at Christmas, heads will roll. Now turn down the heat. The bells are killing me. <laughs> That's not a clam, that's a rock. So, why did you quit? It would have been selfish to stay on the team and keep Ed off. He was born to play basketball. No, he wasn't. He was born to live like a Bigfoot with other Bigfoots. It's not fair to keep him on the team. 
It's not fair for the other schools, and it's not fair for Ed. What do you mean it's not fair to Ed? The only thing anybody cares about is winning stupid basketball games. Nobody cares about Ed. But Ed likes basketball. He also likes wearing my dinghy, but I'm not hiring him to do that. He's like a big baby, Picasso. Everything's fun to him. You don't know any better. When you quit the team, you should have took Ed with you. You don't know what you're talking about. I do, too. Guys like Roland, they think I'm stupid. They laugh at me. I guess it makes them feel special. You know, and I don't, I don't like it. And I don't want to see it happen to Ed. Basketball, he could have started for old Doc Thompson. <laughs> Three. Please. I'm not on the team anymore. Close enough. I gotta use this meat up anyway. Mm. Business has been slow. Food's great. Yeah, it'll pick up. It's funny. You'd think having a winning basketball team would make everybody want to gather here together at the cafe and celebrate. Mm. But I'm telling you, if those lawn ornaments continue to slaughter those other teams, I might go out of business. Changes fast around here. The high pressure front colliding with the jet stream. Stay with us for a recap of the day's headlines. Congratulations to the mighty lawn ornaments on their sinking of the Port Alfred scooters last night. 97 to 50. Be sure to attend the next exciting game next Friday at the Bumstock Sportsplex when we'll rip the fur off the Chester Greenwood Middle School earmuffs.
Ed, mm. would you like me to make you a peanut butter sandwich? What's wrong, Ed? Mm. Mm. Ed? Ed, come on. Mm. Picasso. I think maybe Ed needs to spend a little time alone. He's got to be very uh, mixed up right now. Living like a human boy, going to school, playing basketball. Maybe he misses his parents. Ed! Ed! He does miss his parents, but I don't want him to go. I don't know what to do. And it's a steal for the Bulldogs. Deuce for the dog. Takes the shot, goes around incredible 360, goes up, 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 and he scores! <laughs> Mr. Bumstock, <gasps> the big day has finally arrived. The day when I unveiled to you my new design for the spring line. I felt that uh, if we could move in some new directions, we might be able to inject a note of freshness. Cut the gab and pull the cloth. Yes, sir. Ah! Uh. Uh. Oh, you don't know how I crave such a strong response to my art. Julian, what are you trying to do? Ruin me? Do you think that homeowners are going to want to put statues of fish cuts on their lawns? Fish cuts? No, sir, it's, it's not fish guts. It's, it's not supposed to look like, like fish guts. Well, it does. No, sir, it, it represents the miracle of springtime. And I'm sure that when people see it, they're going they're to... They're going to laugh at me. That's what they're going to do. Ooh. 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 You would like... 
wouldn't you do that? Well, no, sir. Oh, yes, you would. Well, you're not going to get a chance to make a monkey out of me. You're fired! I've been freed. I've been liberated. I look upon this as a great opportunity. From this moment on, Victor Dulap creates alone in his own studio. I don't need Ludlow Bumstock to tell me what to do. Of course not. He doesn't understand art, and he doesn't understand you. Exactly. I guess hmm. the Dulaps just don't fit in here any better than Ed does. We're just different. But of course we're different. That's why we fit in. What do you mean? Son. All of us, every one of us, has to find our own unique place in the world, our own special way to live our lives. If we try too hard to fit in by being exactly like somebody else, it's never going to work, because somebody else has already taken up that spot. I get it. If we were all the same, nobody would fit in. Exactly. It's like basketball. If all the players know the job they're supposed to do and do their job, the team plays beautifully. But if they forget their assignments and start trying to do things that other people are supposed to do, well, then the team just loses the game. My husband is a basketball genius. And that's why they call me Mr. Touchdown. <laughs> that's football. Come in. Hi. Oh, thank you. Oh, Mr. Donovan. Mr. Dulap. Welcome. Hi, Welcome. thank you. Come in. Have a seat. What are you doing uh, here? I'm, I'm fine. Thank you. Uh, so, is, is Ed going to go to school tomorrow? He can't. He has a really bad cold. You know, if he doesn't go to school tomorrow, he, he can't play tomorrow night. He needs his rest. Um, after the game? He, he could go to the Valentine's Day dance. Yeah, they're they're gonna they're fixing up the uh, the the, ca the cap the gym um, with with uh, paper cupids and, and and one of those um uh, mm, very good and one of those uh, mirrored balls going around the ceiling and see the thing is if we don't win tomorrow night we don't go to the tournament and 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 if I can get away with leaving Ed on the bench all night I'm gonna do that I will. It's just that, uh, mm-hmm, okay. Oh, boy. Um, if, if we lose, um, I'm gonna get fired. This is really good. And Cedar Island's trapped down the backboard. Steals and a can bucket. <laughs> Next time, pass play to me, Samantha. Hey, I do what Mr. Donovan says, not what you say. Call me name again, you'll be sorry, Roland. <laughs> That wasn't the buzzer. Just get back in there. Go. Where's Ed? We want Ed. 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 So, Ed, how you feeling? Because, you know, you look really good. They are just killing us. So, do you think you can give me a couple of minutes? 
challenge tonight. Yeah. yeah. Huh? Rockweed Harbor is a really good team. But you know what? I think we're a better team. Yeah. yeah. But in order to win, each man has got to do his job. And there's one more thing. As far as Ed is concerned. I took advantage of him because because uh, I was afraid of losing my job. And I'm not very proud of that. So you know what? Ed has played his last game as a lawn ornament. No, no. Guys, we don't need him to win. We're good enough. We really are. And Picasso? If you will forgive us, eh, no, if you forgive me, we would all really like to have you back on the team. I don't think so. Thanks. And now we would like to present you with a token of gratitude for all the happiness that you have brought to our island. Wow, uh, this is, this is really beautiful. Thank you. Nobody's ever given us anything like this. I, I don't know how I can thank you all. You can win. Win tomorrow night or you're fired. What? Wait, wait a minute. You, you told me that if we got into this tournament, I could keep my job. Now, we're here. You can't go back on your word now. You can't tell me what I can or I cannot do. I built this place. 
And I don't take orders from some goon who's too stupid to use the tallest player on the team. We use is the right word for it. We, we've, been, we've been using an animal unfairly against kids just to satisfy some selfish old bully who thinks he's king in the world. Well, no more bum stock. We're, we're not going to play with Ed anymore. And if we lose, well, it's better than cheating to win. Yeah. You said it, Coach. He's right. That's right. It's true. Ooh. I'll remember this. Hey, children. You're trying to make us lose. No, I'm not. You are too, and that's why you told Donnie that Ed can't play. I didn't tell him that. You're just so jealous of me because you choke so bad, and the only way you can get back at me is to make us lose. Cut out, Roland. You want us all to be losers, just like your stupid loser can't hold a job. Father! Don't say that about my father. He's a weirdo. You're a weirdo. And you both ought to go back to whatever planet you came from because you don't belong here on the island. And you never will. Shut up! Island boys are winners. I'm not a loser, Roland, and my father's not a loser. You're the loser. If you'd stop hogging the ball and you start to do what Mr. Donovan said, you guys could win. Ah, oh, my head! Oh. I let you make me feel like a piece of dirt. But no more, Roland. I live here, and whether you like it or not, that makes me an island boy. Do you get it, Roland? I'm an island boy. Welcome back. Picasso, your mother's tea is a great consolation. It drives away care and soothes the soul. I feel a haiku coming on your beautiful green tea. A frog plops into spring puddle. Cheers. Mushy, mushy. It's for you. It's a man with a cold. Uh. Hello? Don't play the game tonight. You know it's good for you. Uh. If you play too loud, I'll myrtleize you. Does your mother know you make prank calls, Roland? Huh? Don't tell. Um, this is, this, this uh. isn't Roland LeMay. This is uh, somebody else. And I'm big. And I'm a loser. You're a real big loser, Roland. Everyone knows it. Come on, Ed. We gotta go get ready for the game. Don't play in the game tonight if you know what's good for you. What a loser. As if I'd miss the championship finals. Mm. Come on. Mm. Yeah! Mm. Try one, try one. Mm. 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 Ah! Sasquatches are Ed's parents. They want their boy back. He missed them too. And I know just how he feels. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Mr. and Mrs. Tibbetts.
Okay, guys, we are down to eight players. So we have got to stay out of foul trouble, all right? Everyone, team! Come on, let's go! More foul trouble for the lawn ornaments. Regulation with the score tied at 26. We're going into overtime. Excuse me. Sorry. Excuse me, Your Worship. Uh, but uh, my wife and I were wondering if the boys who fouled out might not be allowed to rejoin the game for the overtime. No, no way. Sorry. You seem to be very rigid on this issue, sir. Well, those are the rules. That's the game. Oh. Oh. The lawn ornaments are running out of players. Think you can help us out, Picasso? Go for it. And Zulab is coming in now for the lawn ornaments. Jeez. Oh. Two shots. It's Baxter Bay 29, Lawn Ornaments 28, with two seconds left in overtime. Dulap at the line for two shots. One shot. Okay, guys, I want you to remember the way you showed Ed how to play, all right? Execute the fundamentals, do your jobs, and have fun. Basketball's a game. Okay, now, you're all set? One shot. Choke, choke! He's not gonna choke! He's an island boy! He's an island boy! That's right! He's an island boy! He's an island boy!
Uh, I have an announcement to make. Ludlow Bumstock is a nincompoop. I want to apologize to Mr. Donovan and to all of the lawn ornaments for putting so much pressure on them to win. And I, I just hope you'll all forgive me. But if you want to know why I've been such an old fool all these years, because the greatest thing that ever happened to me was playing on that championship team when I went to Cedar Island. And I've been sinking my money into the basketball team all these years to try and get back that feeling that I had when I was a part of the team. But I never could. Until just a few minutes ago when young Dulap here invited me in. <laughs> and uh, now I got the feeling back in the... Not about winning ball games. It's about fitting in with people and, and belonging. And I haven't felt this good in 50 years now at all to young Picasso Dulap here. I feel good too. Wicked good. Well, uh, is this a party or what? <laughs> What a season. Mr. Bumstock made Victor's partner in the lawn ornament company and has pledged some of the money they make from the statues of Ed to pay for a nice, insulated cabin for the Tibetses in the mountains. I learned a lot about basketball, but a whole lot more about being a friend. Thanks, Ed. I guess human beings can learn by imitation, too. It'll be fun for me to visit Ed up there, but I'll like it even more when he comes to see me here on Cedar Island, the place where I fit in. To see you now, maybe I could see you later. I could take the stairs, maybe take the elevator. But if it's gonna save us the backbreaking labor, we can do so, we can do ourselves a favor. Shake your body, you can shake another table. We we'll never get stuck if you try to read a fable. Everybody dance, and everybody get it. The people never stop and never let it. Have a piece of bread, don't forget about the cheddar. You can have the things that love that make you feel better. You can eat the rice, you can eat the mashed potato. Sitting on a chair at the end. Don't forget the melted cheddar. You can have the things that love and make you feel better. Ah! The rice, you can eat the mashed potato. Ah! 
chair at the end.